Hi, so today I'll be doing my NYP project by providing an informational video on how to do your makeup. This will be tutorial based and I will be going over do's and don'ts when doing your makeup and I'll be going over makeup techniques I've learned within the past like three weeks of research. My center question is how does the knowledge of proper makeup techniques and makeup skills affect the overall outcome of your makeup look? makeup you should wash your face before anything it helps to remove all the dirt that's on your face even though you think you might not there's definitely like natural oils and just build up on your skin so make sure you do that so you have a clean base so I already went ahead and did that but I'll insert the video okay so a cleanser that I really like is this Pons one I know there's no tag there's no like tag on it but um it's also like a makeup remover so I really like that and then as a scrub I have this like exfoliating one from Lather. I'm gonna go in with both of them because this one's an exfoliating and this one's a cleanser. It doesn't really matter, but it just helps remove the dirt off your face before you do your makeup. Okay, I actually just used the exfoliator because it felt like it cleaned enough. I don't think I need to go. I don't think I need to go in twice with something else. I just want to put it out there that makeup is not natural to everyone. Um, personally, I really enjoy doing my makeup, so I like, kind of learned as I grew up. But doing research on this helped further my knowledge. And now I'm gonna share it with you guys and hopefully this video is helpful. And don't feel pressured to wear makeup. I wear it because I wanna accentuate my features like my eyelashes, my eyebrows. I don't really do heavy glam. I normally do natural makeup. And eyeshadow can be very difficult. So just practice it and eventually you'll get it. Okay, so um, uh, the first part of the video was already filmed, but I'm refilming it because I did not like how it turned out at all. And we have limited amount of sunlight. So it's very important to have good lighting when doing this. Oh my gosh, hold on. Yeah, my face is already washed. After you wash your face, the next vital step is moisturizer. I use CeraVe and I really like this one because it's used for like all skin types, but it is very important to moisturize because depending on your skin type, makeup could react differently and dry out your skin more than others or like you could be more prone to acne due to makeup so you want to like make sure you like prepare your skin before you put other stuff on it next up is primer this is optional i personally don't use it but a lot of people find it helpful to provide a smooth base for your foundation it also helps keep the foundation on your face so it doesn't melt throughout the day normally i don't wear foundation in my everyday look i just because my skin is pretty like clear, it's fine. But um, for the purpose of the video, I will be putting on primer and foundation. So like these are the two that I have. And you just apply it just how you would apply your moisturizer. Uh, next step is color correction. This is a step that not many people do when doing everyday makeup because it's just like not as necessary. Mainly they do it for like full glam or like if uh, it's very popular like drag. Using an orange color corrector, it'll cancel out dark slash purple areas in your skin. Disclaimer, only do this when you're gonna wear like a full coverage foundation on top because if not, you'll just have like orange all over your face or like it'll be very patchy. So it's recommended to wear like a full coverage foundation. So in my research, it, it was very common for them to conceal it first and then put their foundation on top. However, per from personal experiences, I found that putting on your foundation first then your concealer looks much better. So we're gonna do that. So these are my two foundations I have. One is a little too light for my face and then one is too dark because this is the shade that I use in the summer. But personally, I would go for a lighter shade because you can always darken it up with like bronzer and contour. Foundation should not be applied like moisturizer. It should be applied evenly throughout the face with a beauty blender or a foundation brush. So these are some common brushes that are used, like the flat standard foundation brush and then like some buffers. And then this is a beauty blender. Personally, I love using a beauty blender. I think it just seamlessly presses it into your skin. When using a beauty blender, you wanna wet it because it'll minimize the amount of product absorption. Also, if you choose to apply your foundation with a brush, you should go for a synthetic brush with thin bristles. This will avoid streakiness and also avoid the absorption of the product. Back to the foundation color, I wanted to mention that different foundation products offer various amounts of coverage. So depending if you're going for like a full coverage look, obviously like a full glam, go for a more full coverage one. If you want more natural, I'd say go for like a tint. So put it on your hand and get a wet beauty blender or whichever. Um, 
be choosing to apply a foundation with. Oh, you could also um, just try to match foundation on your hand in the stores, but make sure it's like the tested item because you don't want to like open a product that someone's gonna buy. Okay, the next step is concealer. Focus on the high points of your face and areas where you wanna brighten it up because concealer is used to hide imperfections, shadows, and dark rings under the eyes. So rule of thumb when choosing your concealer, you wanna choose one that's like yellow based and one that is one or two shades lighter than your natural skin tone. So this is the concealer I will be using. You can see that it has a slight warm undertone and it's lighter than my face. So when applying concealer, you wanna go in a triangular shape under your eye and lift up and make a line like that so your eyes appear lifted. And then you just wanna pat it down and then up. Now we will do powder. Another common mistake that people do is applying way too much powder and going ham on it. So what you wanna do is get your powder in a small fluffy brush. Apply in areas where you don't want your foundation to crease. If you are planning on putting powder all over your entire face to give it like a matte effect, take a large fluffy brush and apply a little bit of powder and then like lightly just go over your whole face. Do not like pack it on. But if you're just going for small areas where you don't want to crease, take a small fluffy brush like this and then you can pack it on like right over where your concealer was and it'll kind of just keep the center of your face bright and then the outside will be darker once you bronze it. So let this sit, then we will wipe it off with a fluffy brush in a minute. Next up is bronzer. It's used to warm up your face, add more color, and it can even be used as contouring. That's what I use as my contour. So this is the bronzer that I use and I use a brush just like this. It's like fluffy but it's like compact enough where it'll like pack it on so what you want to do is right under your cheekbone from your ear to the bottom corner of your lip just make a small line you don't want to go too ham on this either once again this can also be used as contouring you want to apply the darker formula in the hollow of your cheekbones down the sides of your nose and underneath your chin in an article i found about face anatomy i found information about face harmony they mentioned that no individual feature of the face exists in isolation, so if one feature changes, it can have an effect on the face as a whole. After bronzer, you can um, wipe away the extra powder that you had. Now for our nose, we can use this method to make our nose appear more narrow. In an article I found by Beadalish, Wayne Goss, an English makeup artist, shows you how to contour your nose using seven different nose shapes as an example. I found this very useful because they provide a brief description on how to identify which nose you have and how to contour. In the article, it even provides a video where he went in depth on where exactly to place your contour and how it alters the shape of your nose. Briefly reviewing important information in the article, he mentioned that flat noses, you want to focus on adding definition to your bone structure. Triangular noses, you should focus more on the tip of the nose and highlight the inner corner of under the eyebrows. Adding highlighter or powder in a triangular shape between your eyebrows will add a lifting effect for those who have a more heavy nose or cast a shadow. And for irregular noses, you want to keep in mind that you should highlight the parts of your nose that need to be lifted and contour the areas that you want to be thinner. My nose, we're just going to go along the bridge like that. And then we're going to create a button nose effect by adding a line across the top and a little bit underneath and then a little bit to the side creating a circular shadow obviously you're not going to want to leave it like this with the same brush just try to blend it in a little bit with this brush and then with a larger brush i just use the same one that i use for the rest of my face just want to really buff it in try to stay away from putting bronzer on the bridge of your nose or else it just ruins the whole point however if you did if, it, if your nose really does seem dark, you can put concealer right here and along here to brighten it up. Next up is blush. Another common mistake that people make is putting blush in the wrong places. Apply the color on the apples of your cheeks using a small tapered brush or like angular, it looks like this. And then use a large fluffy brush to blend it out seamlessly just to make sure the edges aren't like looking crazy. Once again, like all makeup, there's multiple different forms of this. 
There's like stick blush, there's cream blush, there's loose powder, and then there's like the compact common one that a lot of people use. Personally, I just use the loose powdered one. Blush is very versatile and there's many ways that you can use it, but it does help with a little bit of guidance. Um, I have a reference photo that I found in an article when doing my research. We have three photos, V-shaped, fresh and lively, and sculpted. So the V-shape will focus attention on the eyes. So you apply the blush to your temples and bring it down to like maybe your mid cheek and just blend it out like that. Fresh and lively will give your face a healthy glow. I think this looks best with like more natural looks put it on the apples of your cheeks and then maybe bring it out a little bit but focus it mainly under your eyes and then the last one is sculpted and for a sculpted look apply the blush underneath the highest point of your cheekbone and then smooth it upwards and out to the hairline so pretty similar to the v shape so i like to use the middle one when using blush for darker skin tones people typically look better with a berry shade or a tangerine warm toned blush and for lighter skin tones lean towards a more pink slash warm shade so your next step to follow once you're done with your base makeup, you wanna do your eyebrows. Try keeping most of the product towards the end of your eyebrows, leaving a brushed look. So I am going to include a like template slash eyebrow anatomy photo right here. Typically you just wanna follow the shape of your natural eyebrows, but for those who have really thin slash not as visible eyebrows, we'll have to manually like draw them on. And for those that have more bushy eyebrows, you will, you should groom them and clean up the edges by defining your natural eyebrow shape. So a trick that I have learned over time of doing your makeup, take a pencil or some brush and to identify where your eyebrow should like finish and start on your face, you can use these tricks. So basically going straight up from the side of your nose is where the front of your eyebrows should start. And then from the side of your nose to the outer corner of your eye is where the tail of your eyebrow should fall. And then for the arch of your eyebrow, you wanna look straight ahead, take the pencil to the side of your nose through the pupil of your eye, and that's where it is. That's kind of crazy how that works. Once again, you wanna make sure most of the product is towards the tail of your eyebrows. I use a pot like this and then an angled brush like this. A lot of people use pencil, which works completely fine as well. You wanna just trace your eyebrow, fill it in with a light hand. So what I do, I just follow the natural, my natural shape. And it took a little bit of practice, but if your eyebrows are not that thick or dark at all really, and you have to like literally draw them on, use dark, a darker shade and a lighter shade on the inside. This next step, you could do your eyeshadow however you want. I'm just gonna include it for the purpose of the video, but you could totally skip it. I'll put a timestamp to where I do my mascara and eyeliner and highlighter. So, for your eyeshadow, you wanna take a palette of your choice. There's literally millions of palettes out there. These are a few of the ones I have. You could even eventually explore with like color, um, but I'm gonna go more for like warmer tones today. But I'm doing a natural look. Uh, rule of thumb, keep darker shades on the outside of your eyes and then keep the inner corners of your eyes lighter. So I'm gonna be using both of these palettes today. First step is to make sure you have like a smooth base so the eyeshadow will apply nicely. So I go in with this first skin tone color. Um, find one that, that'll just match your skin or the closest one to just a base and then just apply it all over your lid like that. It literally does not have to be perfect. So once we have like this light base, take a small fluffy brush. Before we continue, another common mistake that people make is not cleaning their brushes. I am guilty of this, I will admit. I do clean them, but just not as often. Often there's excess product left on your brushes and makeup will build up in your brush, causing it not to be as efficient. Not only that, if you're doing your eyeshadow, if you're working with colors, it'll just all blend together and then that buildup of colors will probably transfer to your eye and it's just not the color that you chose. So clean your brushes. However, I will not be doing it just for this video. I'm just gonna continue. You don't wanna go straight to the dark color. You wanna do a like warm tone first. So I'm gonna go in with this one. So you wanna lightly, light hand. This is another mistake that a lot of people do. They hold the brush incorrectly and holding it with a harsh grip doesn't apply the product efficiently. So 
instead try to hold it towards the end it will give you less control but it'll give you a more airbrushed finish okay you will have to trust the process watch take a fluffy brush once you have the product on take a fluffy brush um, and blend out the product once that is done now you can go in for the darker color that you wanted i'm going with this central park color right here bring it up and down a little bit and then you'll blend the edges in a second Okay, I did a really bad job in explaining this part, but basically I was just going over my eyeshadow once again so I could make it brighter. And then to blend both colors, I just used a fluffy brush with a color either in between or just the extra product that was on top. Okay, I feel like I can make this better, but um, I still want some light for the rest of this video. So, we're gonna move on. Take a flat brush once again. We're gonna re-brighten the inside of our eye. Taking that first color that we went with, lightly pat it like that once again i suck at explaining so here i took a light shimmer from my palette it has gold hints in it but it's primarily white and then i blended out the edges with a fluffy brush just so it wouldn't look like i just placed it on top and then i did it on the other eye as well okay eyeshadow complete so i'm just gonna go straight to eyeliner i'm not gonna do my eyeshadow um but i will do that in another part black eyeliner adds more definition and makes your eyes appear more almond rather than round. And white eyeliner makes your eyes look larger. And then brown eyeliner can be used as like a more subtle slash soft version of black eyeliner if you don't want to go straight like dark. There's pencil eyeliner and then there's like liquid eyeliner and I think there's like a pot that you can use similar to the, my eyebrow product that I use. Liquid eyeliner will emphasize your eyes more than pencil liner. But do not use liquid liner on your waterline because it will go into your eyes and that can be dangerous. But don't get stressed because eyeliner is one of the hardest things to do. So personally, I just like going for a winged look. The tail of your wing should be above your eye, otherwise your um, it'll look pulled down, your eyes will look pulled down. And then connect it to your lower lash line. A popular trend that's been happening recently is applying eyeliner in the inner corner of your eyes in a triangular shape. Making a reference point helps. Bottom of the waterline up a little bit, make a little dot. Same with this one, like that. What you can do, bring it from the waterline up, and then you can go straight across from there. Just like that. And then you can fill it in. And then also you can like apply more on your eyelid and it just kind of looks like that. Did it and I think it looks much better now. It even takes me a long time to do it, so it takes a lot of practice to eventually get the hang of it. Last step highlighter, and I love this step. So, there's lots of different highlighters, there's different colors as well. I like to go for a more rosy. You can use a little fluffy brush like this or a little um, fan brush. So, you apply the product like this and then highlight the high points of your face. Okay, then what I do is also highlight my nose right here and then the bridge of your nose. I use this My Badescu spray. If I spray your brush, it'll like um, make the highlighter pop, which is kind of crazy, but I don't know how that works. But it just does. You can um, put highlighter on the inner corner of your eyes. I take a very small defined brush like this and I go in with like a much lighter color to brighten it up. Everyone's favorite part, mascara. There's hundreds of mascaras out there. Just find which one you like the best. I like this CoverGirl one. It's like a brownish. It's like a very, very dark brown. Um, and you'll be able to tell with this one that it's not black. Um, so if I'm going for a more light natural look, I'll go for this one. There's also different mascaras that do different things like lengthening, volume, and then there's ones that just make your eyelashes a lot darker. There's even clear mascara, which I also have. You also need an eyelash color for this. You just 
in upwards motion like this and then side to side that's what i do also what works is like a little rolling motion upwards like that now i'll get to my bottom lashes once your eyelashes are dry you can curl them finally apply any lip of your choice whether it's gloss lipstick or even a tinted chapstick personally i do not ever wear lipstick if anything i will wear this lip tint it blends out and it's like very natural which i really like and last step to set it all off you just need setting spray this setting spray from tarte i use the matching primer so just some And you're done! So I hope this video was helpful. I know it wasn't as good as I thought I could make it. I was kind of stuttering a little bit. But after all my research, it honestly did help me apply my makeup better, like foundation. And like, um, as you can tell, my makeup is just like, not spotty. And oh yeah, this is what my makeup looks like up close. Thank you, bye!